Hello everyone. Today I want to discuss with you some important things. This is one piece of advice to my dear students. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. So, dear all, how to manage your exam? This is my important item I want to discuss with you today. And I want you to feel relaxed and to be self-confident and to avoid any stress because these days around the exam is full of stress. Try to avoid any stressful conditions. And I wish you all best of luck. So how to manage case scenarios in short easy questions? First, I want you to skim read of the case scenario to get the big picture of the whole case scenario. Then read again the case scenario slowly and carefully. Then identify keywords, underlining words or numbers which indicate a particular kind of problem. What is important? like age of the patient, like risk factor, like any operation done, any important keywords. Identify them very well and the underlining the words so not to miss them. After that, analyze and interpret the keywords to reach diagnosis because when you connect these keywords with each other, sure, you can find the diagnosis. Then think about the differential diagnosis for this case and arrange them properly. Okay? How you can arrange the differential diagnosis? Arrange them according to the which one is more related to the case scenario or more close to the case scenario. Also, maybe the most important one. Okay, so arrange this differential diagnosis in your mind. Then try the diagnosis. It should be a complete one. And uh, when we say complete, fulfilling the criteria. Anatomical, etiological, and the functional diagnosis. But in obstetric cases, diagnosis has a very specific item as we'll see later on. So, in gynecologic cases and in other medicine, pediatric, general surgery, surgery or whatever, you will need anatomical, etiological and functional diagnosis. This is complete diagnosis because some students believe that they found certain diagnosis. They, they think this is the only diagnosis. No, it is not complete one. They may catch the etiological diagnosis or the anatomical one or the functional one. But to write a complete diagnosis, fulfill all of three. Anatomical, etiological, and the functional. And I'll give you example later on. Then think about the next step in this case and the which issue you will deal with first. Think how you will integrate your answer. You have to mention both the issue from the scenario and the related course material. Of course, this is right. Lastly, don't leave exam hall early. Do double check to all of your answers. Also, maybe spelling mistake, you can correct it or any other mistakes. Or you may change your mind about certain uh, uh, answer you did or something like that. So don't leave the exam hall. The duration or the time of the exam is very precious. So don't miss the time. Take the whole time of the exam inside the hall and give you yourself the chance to double check. But at the same moment, don't hesitate.
don't be confused okay and while you are doing double check so this is the example is for diagnosis as we said we said to fulfill all criteria should include etiological anatomical and functional so i'll give you an example for from gynecology postmenopausal cystorectocele and the stress incontinence postmenopausal here is the etiological diagnosis cystorectocele anatomical one stress incontinence a functional one another example from medicine hypertensive left ventricular hypertrophy and heart failure and pulmonary edema which one which one is the etiological hypertensive which one anatomical left ventricular hypertrophy which one is functional is a pulmonary edema or heart failure so you should include all the three in your answer when you are talking about diagnosis okay another example if we are talking about for example rheumatic heart disease with mitral stenosis and heart failure which one is etiological the rheumatic heart which one anatomical mitral stenosis which one is functional is the heart failure or pulmonary edema okay so these are examples but we said in obstetrics it is a very special condition for full diagnosis in obstetric, we say the following items gravidity, parity, gestational age, fetal line, presentation, position, engagement, any medical disorder, RH factor, if it is negative, you should mention any medical uh, uh, diseases with pregnancies or previous scar due to caesarean or rupture uterus or myomectomy or previous surgical operation in gynecology which can affect our decision as regard delivery like classical repair for uh, genital prolapse so it is important to mention in diagnosis so this is the full obstetric diagnosis for a case So how to manage MSQ exam? First, enter your name and the ID number properly. Then read the instructions given to you and follow all instructions. Of course, when you are writing the name and the ID, maybe electronic one if the exam is electronic or in hard copy if the exam using papers and don't forget if you are using papers not electronic one to calculate the number of pages so not to have any missed page before you start calculate and be sure that you have the required number of pages and follow all instructions start from the first question how will you read this term try to anticipate the correct response if you see the response that you anticipated circle it or check it in the box or in the circle so it is almost always nearly will be the cor the most correct answer okay what about if I found two responses? I feel that there is two correct answers. These two responses appear to be equally correct. Please remember, you are looking for the past correct one. That's why you should eliminate the response that appears least related to the question. This is very important and many students are confused about this point. So you choose the most correct one and the, the most close one to the stem fill the appropriate pupils carefully using HP pencil or according to the instructions maybe there is certain instructions related to the exam to use certain uh, pencil or another one or pen or whatever so you should have pause 
If you cannot answer a question in less than 30 seconds, skip it and the plan to come back later. Don't waste time with difficult questions. Of course, check for this question. This is hard question and you want to read it at the end. Okay? Don't waste time in a single question. Some questions are straightforward, so answer them simply like that. Don't dismiss a response because it seems too obvious. And this mistake happened with many students when they found the answer is very clear and straightforward. They think that there is something wrong, there is another answer, so no, it is simple like that. It is just a straightforward question and it happens. Don't try to do several things at once because this increases the probability of making a mistake. Of course, if you are dealing with certain question right now, don't think about the previous one or another question just to concentrate, concentrate in this question in your hand at this moment. So don't do several things at once. Lastly, again, don't leave exam hall early. Please, you should know that the duration and the time of the exam is very precious and you cannot regain them back. So don't leave the exam hall after the full time of the exam. Okay? And do double check without any confusion and without any hesitation. What about handling of patients during clinical exam in OSCE? This is very important, really. When you are talking with the patient, begin the dialogue by saying good morning. Then introduce yourself. I am my name, then medical student in Mansoura University and explain your role. So, simple like that, okay? Your words should be clear with suitable tool and ensure your verbal communication is appropriate and associated with a smile. Feel relaxed, speak politely, and speak in language the patient will understand because it is very important. Ask about patient name to be more close and familiar and use Mrs. or Ms. before her name for respection. Apologize to the patient because of long stay in the exam. Then start to discuss the items you need with self-confidence. If the patient asked you a question, you should answer her. This is very important. If you will examine the patient abdomen, for example, ask patient politely for permission to do that. And if alcohol and septic available, use it to clean your hand before and after examination. Also, gloves may also be needed. Expose the part needed to be examined and do examination gently. At the end, cover patient abdomen again and thank her for uh, very much for the help. Of course, the patient is help is helping you and and doing a great job. Okay, in, in medical education, so we respect our patient. We thank them very much for their effort with us. This is my last slide and I wish you all the best. My best wishes for all of my students and good luck in all exams. Professor Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.